911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Sergeant Walton. Clint, how are you? I'm excellent. I saw a post from Mike the Cop. I don't ever come across his post, so it's ironic that I did because um, this one was something that I've been thinking thinking about a lot lately. And he was talking about the six lies that cops tell themselves to stay on the job. So I thought it might be fun for us to go through these. And he's calling them lies. But I kind of wanted to push back against that a little bit and talk about some reasons why it might be true as well. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Now, we talk about this a lot, Clint. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody who knows me knows that I'm the biggest proponent of you choosing to leave law enforcement if you feel pulled to do so. I am the biggest proponent of you understanding that there is so much more available to you in the world um, if you feel like law enforcement is not a good fit for you. And I'm a massive proponent of people who are questioning their career as a law enforcement officer to make the move now. And sometimes that doesn't necessarily mean getting out of law enforcement altogether. In my experience, I have found that a lot of times it means that you're working for the wrong department. You know, it's when you're in that unhealthy relationship with your work and and, and you're uncomfortable and and I'll even take it to that other level of not just you're, you're in the wrong department, you may just be stagnant to what position you're currently in. Maybe you want to promote, maybe you want to find that detail, maybe you're, you're struggling in that, say you're a patrol officer and you want something else for your, for your career, it's being able to make those changes for yourself. The first lie we have here is I wouldn't be good at anything else. Why I think this might feel true is that I think a lot of officers identify so passionately with their jobs that they can't even imagine or fathom doing something different. And a reason why I think this isn't necessarily true is because the skills, the leadership, crisis management, communication, everything that you have learned to make you and mold you into a police officer, these are all skills that are incredibly transferable in other fields. What do you think? You know, I, I taught a class on this just recently, like the marketing, the the sales techniques that we use on a regular basis. It's being able to look at, we wear, we say this all the time, we wear a hundred hats on a daily basis of being a cop, we're psychologists, we're counselors, we're salespeople, we're mitigators, we're, you know, we wear so many hats as we go through each day. It's being able to identify that for yourself and which ones are you really good at and which ones would you rather not have to do? Another one that's on here is it's the only thing that I know. And that's the, that's, you know, for me, I I was 21 when I got into the law enforcement realm and, and I could easily say, this is the only thing I know, which I know that to be bullshit. Like there's so much more that we as individuals know as being in law enforcement, we know more than the general public to be able to go out and perform at a higher capacity at any, any other job that we truly wanted. We would just have to apply ourselves. What I put on here is the reason it might feel true is because years of specialized training and experience can make it seem like other jobs are just totally out of reach. I'm thinking about how when you and I first got married, you were not a police officer. And I remember having a conversation with you. I don't know if you even remember this, but I asked you, what, what, what would you be doing if you weren't doing what you're doing now? And what, do you remember what you told me? I don't. You told me you would be a youth pastor or you would be teaching children sports. Oh, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> no, and and that's one of those things. Like I, I enjoyed that, and and I enjoy like I to this day being a cop, like going out and helping kids and and being there for them to support them and and to build them up. Like that's still something I enjoy doing, and but I'm getting paid as a cop to do it. So to say that it's the only thing that I know, I think another reason why this isn't necessarily true is because there are so many industries that value the sort of unique edge and knowledge and even discipline that former law enforcement officers can bring to the table. The next one I have here is I might make, no, I make too much money to leave. You know, we get so 
caught up on that fear of wanting to leave a, you know, leaving any career. And I think that goes with anybody is if you leave that career and you have a solid foundation of your income coming in, like it's always a risk, no matter what, it's a risk. And yeah, you could be making decent money or you could not be. It's, it's, there's risks involved and it's important to have your happiness as number one when it comes to it. I think too that an officer might be comparing their salary to to other an officer might be comparing the salary that they make to the wrong salaries. And what I mean by that is, yes, of course, law enforcement can offer incredibly competitive salaries that basically other sectors can find it very difficult to be able to match. However, from a lot of people that I have talked to, once they decide to ditch law enforcement, whether they've retired from it or they decide mid-career that they're going to switch careers, what they have found is that opportunities in things like the private security, consulting, corporate roles, they either match but oftentimes exceed what the officer was earning. And I was reading a comment that Mike the Cop had put on there, and he's a, a living example. To be honest, completely honest, I have no idea what Mike the Cop does apart from being a social media once was cop. <laughs> but he he was explaining how he he can't even imagine um, the amount of money he couldn't have imagined the amount of money that he's making now compared to what he was making as a cop. Yeah, it's it's. I know a lot of partners who, whether they're forced resigned or they decided to take a different career path in their lives, and they're doing extremely well for themselves because of the drive that they have to be able to put forth that effort. The next one here is the benefits are just too good. And. There's so many places that have way better benefits and, and, you know, there's great, there are great benefits within agencies and medical, um, retirement and uh, like all that stuff, but it's, we're not the only field that offers that stuff. I, I want to say something here too, because just as we've learned that we should never choose the state that we live in based on politics, we should also not choose our career based on their benefits because both are fluid. Yeah. Your benefits have changed dramatically. You know, they've gone up, they've gone down, they, they've gone all over the place. Your city wasn't bankrupt. Like, there's so much that changes when it comes to benefits. I think that's a really, uh, a really poor excuse. Yeah, and I look at it as when I first started, be- when I became a cop, I my retirement was 3% at 50. Now, these guys are 2.5 at 57. Like, they have to work longer to make a less percentage than what I'm going to get. And, and th- that's changed. That's changed three or four times since I've been a cop myself. I'm too close to retirement. That's, that's another one. If you're that close and you're, you're being told that like internally or by your spouse or whoever it is that, you know, it's time for you to move on. If you're that close to retirement, guess what? ride it out doing something else until you retire and then collect your retirement as well. Well, and it depends too. I'm going to, I'm going to push back on this one a little bit because I, I think that's a shitty excuse depending on your current state of health. So if you're too close to retirement and let's just pretend too close is four years, I'm just going to throw that one out there and you, your body sucks, your mind sucks. There's nothing about your, your health that's going in your favor whether it's something that could be corrected or not is something that I think needs to be examined. So is it something that you is treatable now? Or is it something that is going to continue to deteriorate to which you get to retirement and then you're bedridden, let's say? Yeah, you, you want to be able, like, if you lose those benefits by leaving that department and then not being able to work because of your health, like, that, that is a big factor too. Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with his his putting that here that it's a lie saying I'm too close to retirement because it, there are so many contributing factors to that. You know, if I think you're too close to retirement, right? And you're you're still a, a decade away. So, yeah. um, I, I but again, like there, you're also not in this in this segment of people who are mm-hmm. questioning whether or not they should be a police officer. So I think that it's important to really actualize the things that are going on around you to where like do you see retirement being something that's going to be fulfilling if you have to wait another four years and this could be that you know your admin just is awful right then that in and of itself i can't tell you how much my life changed when i got out of a toxic work environment when i realized that i was working for lucifer themselves 
and I stopped working for them, I used to have weird things that would happen that I didn't realize were because of the place that I worked. An example of this, I would have random heart palpitations and I would do this research and it turns out like it's very common in females and uh, like your menstrual cycle can have a lot to do with it. it. It took me a while to realize that that has not happened at all since I stopped working for that individual. When that individual would come into the office, as soon as I would hear that back door open, I would feel this tingling up my spine, the kind that you get when you're fearful. And I wasn't afraid of her. Like, God, I'm not afraid of her. But my body was my body was making measurements of what the day would bring, I guess. And I've never experienced anything like that outside of that work. There's so many things that happened to me while working there. Like that would have killed me if I had to stay there for, you know, retire there. Like I couldn't even imagine that. So I think it's important to be able to realize the things that are going on with your health when it comes to the whole I'm too close to retirement. Oh, here's a good one. It'll make me a quitter or a coward. You know, nothing in this world is... I To me, that right there is just a kind of a escape or a catch-all for, for guys to say, oh, I don't want to be a coward or a quitter. And one, it really has nothing to do with it in my mind. It's you're not a coward. You're not a quitter. You've, you've stuck it out. You've done what you wanted to do for so long. And what would what would change that? Like, just because your happiness matters more, like, in my mind, that doesn't make you a quitter. For me, you're you're actually the coward or the quitter by um, by saying that to yourself. That's the, the false narrative, the fake story that you're telling to yourself to make you feel better about maintaining the decision of staying in law enforcement when perhaps you want to get out of it altogether. Because it takes a great deal of courage for a police officer, anybody who's in the middle of their career, the one that they decided this is the one for me, and then you change your mind midway, 100%, it does not make you a coward. That is, that is an incredible incredibly courageous thing to do just as you know being in a marriage for for that long and then deciding midway that this isn't for me I used to have a different viewpoint of individuals like that but after talking to as many people as I have on this topic it takes a lot of courage to do any to commit to something and then midway decide like I I made a mistake or I am giving myself permission to change my mind I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always, know that I am sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.